Flav, he'll only punish one, but it's just aerial to find, and it's done! They had one goal! That's it, that's all they wanted, back to back! And they've done it now! Astralis, a name now synonymous with dominance. Fresh off one of the most epic eras in Counter-Strike history, it is easy to forget that once upon a time, Astralis's core were Counter-Strike's greatest underachievers. Languishing for years as the could-have-beens of CSGO, it wasn't until the latter part of 2016 that Astralis finally assembled a team capable of taking the top spot decisively. That Astralis lineup, under the leadership of Glaive and with Device as one of the world's superstar players, was the prime force in the game for a span of half a year or more. They would win a major, come close to a second, win three notable international titles, lose in two more big finals and reach the semi-finals and legitimate championship position in a number of other events. For a span of 10 tournaments, Astralis were champions, finalists or top four and lined up to potentially leave with the trophy. It was not until late in this run that any rival could reasonably challenge their status. This is the story of that Astralis team, of the lineup that gunned for an era of their own over a year prior to the one which would deliver upon that esteemed goal. This is the story of Astralis and the era that almost was. Astralis are a team for whom championship glory was a long time coming and yet seemingly seeded in their genetic makeup. Astralis's core of Device, Dupree and Zipnix has been playing together since mid-2013. At that time, they were developing into potential dark horses, good enough to challenge the top sides of the day, but not prevail just yet. Their team, Copenhagen Wolves, came to relevance in the shadow of another Danish team. Western Wolves had reached two notable international finals in early 2013 under the leadership of Glaive, only to see the team torn apart by internal issues. By 2014, the Astralis Corps, then known as Team Dignitas, were capable of championship glory in theory, but in practice proved unable to even reach any finals. Time and time again halted at the semi-final stage, in majors and the other tournaments of the circuit. Veteran source in-game leader Fetish was finally ousted late that year following an underwhelming top eight finish at the major and replaced with Carrigan. You run it and try and have yourself a party. How much damage can be done, Fnatic? They lose only one player, or maybe they might lose more. Yes, Device can win him on the battle. And well in fact, KGB from behind, can they really win the grand final on a pistol round? It's a two on what one. A it's just ball. Olaf left, and he's going to get Carrigan down. There it is. Well KGB played. will end it on well the aggressive played. pistol down mid. They take it. This proved the key change to transition Dignitas from dark horse with unfulfilled potential to regular champions. As well as repeatedly slaying the prime Fnatic lineup in their own era, Dignitas, now playing as Team Solo Mid, would win a total of five trophies that year and vie unsuccessfully for the majors. Rush is the last man left here. A grenade would kill him by a headshot, will too, and Device gonna clean it up, gonna take the grand finals away from Fnatic here. Renaming to Astralis in early 2016, this team were unable to build upon their status from the previous year, falling behind the pace as the likes of Fnatic, Na'Vi and Luminosity bested them. Despite occasional flashes of brilliance, Astralis proved to be a much less potent team relative to their time than TSM had been the previous year. Weak performances stacked up, and eventually the team was pressured into a player change, removing versatile veteran Cajun B in favour of young stud Kirby, who had made his name as the star of Dignitas, the other Danish team, early that year. Even this move was not enough to meaningfully change Astralis's fortunes, and after months without the kind of top placings they were accustomed to, the team made the drastic but calculated gamble of removing in-game leader Carrigan, who had done so much to define and develop their style and strengths in favor of Glaive. Unlike his Western Wolves days, when he had been one of the premier leaders in the game, praised for his place at the cutting edge of tactical play, Glaive was a far less certain prospect in the latter portion of 2016. After years of floating around the bottom of the top tier of CSGO, 
Glaive had briefly looked to have sunk out of sight completely, returning as a mere player and secondary caller in Heroic, what would eventually become Denmark's third best lineup, but would initially challenge for more. Signing Glaive was a commitment to something new, an entire reformulation of the roles and style of the team. Little could they have known, but their gamble would at last grant them a chance to be not just a winning team, but a dominant one too. Glaive was added to the Astralis lineup in late October. Before they could attend any offline tournaments, the team had to begin their online ECS season. Starting 2 and 4, they would finish 13 and 5 over the next month or so to top the league and announce their arrival as a hot property. Two kills for him. That's one versus one. Through the smoke. That's disgusting. Astralis' first appearance offline with Glaive was for their group at E League Season 2. They would win their group, despite it featuring SK Gaming and Na'Vi, two of the world's top ranked sides. The playoffs of the event would be held later though. Astralis' first full offline event with this lineup would be at IEM 11 Auckland. Overcoming an initial loss to G2. Dream's gonna find the kill 16 to 12. Astralis not really turning up on the T half at all there, man. They won their round robin group and advanced directly to the semi-finals. There, they faced SK Gaming, the world's best team for most of that year, and the two-time back-to-back reigning major champions. The opening map would immediately signal that Astralis were a team capable of much. SK were riding a 15-game winning streak on train, their remaining home map from their dynasty. Even the likes of Virtus Pro, legendary train team, and famously difficult to put away, had been spanked on train by SK in the previous months. Astralis would lose the opener 14-16, but even to take SK that close was an ominous sign for the rest of the scene. The series would go to SK 2-0, but showcased a very legitimate challenge from Astralis in their very first outing together. What a big kill coming through. The bomb will be planted with three seconds left. And now Dupree and Kebu left. Can they hold on? Can they get to overtime? Taco, there it is, 16-14. Returning to Atlanta for the playoffs of E-League Season 2, Astralis faced history itself as the Ninjas and Pajamas team drawn against them in the quarterfinals was a core who had frequently beaten Astralis from the early days when they were Dignitas through to key disappointments in 2015 and 2016 when Astralis was supposedly the better team and yet continued to lose high profile matchups with their Swedish foils. A three map victory here was key for the Danes to distinguish this new lineup as part of a different paradigm than the last. This is not looking doable at all. The assist is going to get down as well. Sipnik's finding his 26th kill here on uh, Overpass. Just a very strong scoreline for him and for Kirby. Both Forest is going to be going down, and that's it. 16-10 as NIP go out, and Astral is going to move past and play in the semi-finals. In the semi-finals, they would rematch SK and successfully secure revenge for the IM Auckland semi-final. Astralis this time completed the feat of taking down SK on train, snapping their offline streak at 17 wins, and would take the series in a sweep. This would be the last time FNX played for SK. Through to their first final already, Astralis were heavy favourites to take the title, especially in light of how the other side of the bracket had played out. Unlikely rising squad Optic continued to build a reputation for themselves, as they were able to slay Nico's Mouse Sports and then Carrigan's Fears. Form seemed to favour Astralis, and the map pool meant Optic granted Astralis Overpass as the decider, one of Glaive and Company's best maps. Despite such advantages, Optic would not just reach the third map, but win it 16-11 on the back of an epic solo performance from erratic young star Naf. Kebu could have maybe even got the double kill. Now Naf flies down here. The hero of Optic Gaming, he goes for the spray, catches the pre perfectly, follows up with a headshot on Sipnix. This guy in the grand finals, 34 kills now. He just needs another couple and they will have that trophy. It's gonna be Kebu and Glaive left with over a minute, but in a two on four, spray comes through, Rush gets a kill and ladies and gentlemen, Optic Gaming, the winners of E! Season two. Astralis would have to wait to win their first title, again put in the position of being close, but seeing others leave as champions. That wait was around a week, as the very next tournament was the ECS Season 2 Finals their online dominance had qualified them for. 
Defeating Optic and Phase in the group stage, Astralis drew SK in yet another semi-final. This time playing with Fox instead of FNX, SK were far less of a challenge and were easily dispatched from contention. Astralis are back in a final and back up against Optic. The final was a rematch of E-League as Optic again challenged them for a trophy. This challenge would be far less impressive though as Astralis easily won an overpass and train to both symbolically and literally make up for their misdeeds in the E-League final. They have the ability to have the advantages in multiple oncoming rounds, so this is a big one to stay focused on, fully focused on, to pull it over the line for Astralis. If they lose this round, I think overtime is very, very much a possibility. Astralis get it done, you can see, trying to use some Molotovs there to force some CTs out, of, out into the open for for the pick off, their device was waiting patiently, and now they're pushing Ali. This might be a faster round. There goes Dupree after picking off Nafly device as well. Going around the back of the site. Rush can't do anything about it. Three players left to stop Astralis from winning ETS Season 2. Mix one on fire. He's in trouble. He has a no scope. The boy's getting traded. Still alive. Now he's the last man standing, but he can't do it. Astralis are your ECS Season 2 champion 2016. Astralis had their first trophy as a team all of three events into their tenure together. The first event of 2017 was the Major, as E-League hosted their first and CSGO's 10th in their home base of Atlanta. Astralis were automatically qualified thanks to having a legend spot from the previous Major. Despite arriving as the world's number one ranked team, Astralis would have a tricky time in the Swiss system phase opening the event managing to make it through after the maximum of five possible games. A shocking upset loss to Godsent on Train in the opener was responded to with Train wins over Optic and G2. A thrilling Dust 2 defeat at SK's hands was redeemed with a win over Team Liquid to secure one of the final playoff berths. In the quarterfinals, Na'Vi were the opponent bearing down Astralis. The CIS squad had been rocky in recent tournaments, but had aced the Swiss system 3-0 and had blossoming superstar Simple and a blazing hot flamey in tow. The series saw Na'Vi taking a map, but that was the only one close for the Eastern Europeans as Astralis moved through to a fourth straight semi-final at a big international event. In the semi-finals, the opponent would turn out to be Fnatic, as Astralis continued their efforts from the E-League match against NIP of slaying old cores who had been better than them. Throwback play from Crimson Olaf Meister aside, Astralis were the better team and overcame an exciting overtime opener to still win the series in a 2-0 sweep. Playing in the first major final of any of their careers, Astralis met Virtus Pro. The Poles had been one of the revelations of the previous year, overcoming an initial slump to resurrect themselves to elite status and contend for majors and win some titles. Having battled through a war with SK in the other semi-final, VP were fully poised to play the role of final bosses for Astralis. VP's lineup had already won a major, almost three years prior, and were legendary for their tenacity in big stage matches. The series was the stuff of legend. VP won their map, Nuke, in a close opener. Astralis looked in trouble on their own pick of overpass as VP pressured them relentlessly but would steal the win 16-14 with a key 1v3 from Zipnix on one health point helping them along the way. The decider was Train. On one hand, the map stood as one of Astralis' best and home of some key victories already. On the other, VP were one of the best teams in history on the map and Astralis had already lost to Godsent on it at this very tournament. History looked to have sided with the Poles as they gained a near overwhelming foothold on the decider, going up 13-7 and sat on the dominant CT side of the map. Got him backed up in here. How does he get out? He's got a minute. That's how. He's got all the time to work with here. He just, needs to take it. he just needs to play it carefully and basically hope that somebody's going to be looking the wrong way when he comes around the corner, but of course not. Snacks will hit the shot, holding the angle. And Virtus Pro up on 13 rounds now. In-game leader Glaive would show his value as a different kind of leader from Carrigan, 
grinding his team back into the game and eventually pushing them to undiscovered territory, emerging as the team with the most fortitude in the contest and taking them to the trophy. Are we going to see it? Are Astralis going to break the curse? Are they going to win their first major, the first time they're in the finals? And their first title, we'll find out because the action's on and Gabby opens it up, takes down Bialy already! There's the start, four more kills, and they will have made it the full distance. Snacks in a, on a comfortable position, he goes down with the max 70, can't make it happen. Finally, Pasha coming in with a refrag, but he's down. The bomb has been picked up by Dupree, they get the spray, Neo takes one, and Taz is there, and Astralis, they win the first major championship, 16-14 against Virtus Pro. Unbelievable. Astralis were major champions. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen, your major champions, Astralis. Ranked world number ones, now major champions, and with two international titles back to back, Astralis were showing signs of being a special team in CSGO history. Device had been the best player in the world and at the major right up until the final, where he had floundered, as was often the case in his career to that point only for youngster Kirby to take over and secure victory for his team. Device had come alive late in the game, but decisive play from another name in the roster was a sign that this was a new Astralis. What were they not capable of with such a squad? With Astralis now the best team in the world, we're still only halfway through this incredible story. Make sure to check out part two of this Thorin documentary when it drops next week. The easiest way to know when it's out is to subscribe. Otherwise, thank you for watching.